before we go, Dr. Offit, I mean, how do you think, uh, are, what do you envision happening with these measles, measles outbreaks? Are they going to continue to affect, I said, what, 12 states um, have been impacted so far? I mean, where do you see this going and what kind of ramifications will there be? Well, so when we had our measles outbreak in 1991 and we were running around with our hair on fire because it was so bad, 1,400 cases and nine deaths in one city in a three-month period, um, the thing that finally ended that was spring. <laughs> so, so May is what ended. Although we did something in Philadelphia that has never been done before and has never been done since, which is we had compulsory vaccination for those children whose, whose parents were choosing not to vaccinate them. What was interesting is what they were doing was perfectly legal. They were choosing a religious exemption to not be vaccinated in the midst of a massive epidemic. So we, got, we had a, a law in the city of Philadelphia for compulsory vaccination, not mandatory vaccination, compulsory vaccination. Those children had to be vaccinated against their parents' will, even though the parents Parents were doing something legal. So the head of, I think, the pastor of Faith Tabernacle Church went to the American Civil Liberties Union and said, represent me to do something that's perfectly legal. And, so, and a surprise to all of us, they, they wouldn't do it. And the, the woman whose last name was Levitt, who was head of the Pennsylvania chapter of the ACLU, said something I'll never forget. She said, while it is your right to martyr yourself to your religion, it is not your right to martyr your child to your religion. And that's the way I feel at some level about uh, what's going on. Who stands up for these children? The, the assumption is always the parent represents presents the child's best interest. But what about when that's not true? And what about Who steps in that? when that child dies, as was the case in West Texas? Exactly.